At a showcase event in the USA, Microsoft briefly demonstrated Windows 10 on phones using a Lumia 1520 with updates to the start screen, application list, settings, messaging experience, user input and more. The key point was the commonality of Windows across all devices. In this case, with an emphasis on the consumer experience, a number of universal applications that work across PC, tablet and smartphone. Office, Outlook, Calendar, People, Photos, Music, Xbox and more. And it's all a free upgrade, of course, for everything from Windows 7 desktops to Windows 8.x phones upwards. The price of really good Android smartphoning continues to come down across the board. Of course, with the likes of the Moto G 2014, Nexus 5, OnePlus One and Moto X all vying for attention. HTC's main thrust in recent times has been at the high end, but with devices like this, the Desire i, it's moving down a little and bringing the company's excellent screens and speakers and now cameras within range of more people. The i comes in at around £350, depending on where you look. Of course, you may well ask why it's called the Desire i. Is it that the main camera is class leading? Well, not so much, though it's pretty good in good light. More that an exact copy of it, this 13 megapixel rear snapper, is now mounted front and center above the screen, making for, in theory, ultra high resolution selfies. Eek! But more of that later. The I is in many ways a, a polycarbonate version of the One M8, but improved to be waterproof and have far better cameras. So you'd really, really want to have metal in order to go for the older Big Brother device. Specs here are right up for modern Android. 2.7 gigahertz Snapdragon 801, two gig of RAM, 5.2 inch 1080p LCD screen, 2400 milliampere battery, all top notch, meaning that the Desire i is fast and smooth at all times and right up with most flagships. Who the heck needs a QHD screen anyway? The two-tone plastic is really high quality with a smooth matte finish. Arguably too smooth, but at least the eye is narrow enough that you can get a really firm grip on it. I didn't drop it once. The waterproofing does detract from the feel of the side buttons, especially the new to HTC camera shutter button, which is absolutely horrible. Pressing this all the way to take a shot requires so much pressure <laughs> and resulting hand wobble that you'll have motion blur in the photo. There's no OIS here, of course. Above and below the superb screen are the usual HDC boom sound speakers, albeit outputting through tiny slits now with a smaller acoustic cavity and with a waterproof membrane to get through too. The result is decent sound, but nowhere near as much bass quality or volume as on the One M7 and M8. Here's a demo. This is max volume. Hmm. Nice, really nice crisp top end, but the bass just isn't there and the volume's not there either. Uh, on the left are the rubber bunged fingernail extractable trays for the micro SD and nano SIM card. These need a little leverage from a screwdriver from me since I broke a fingernail trying, I know, oh, I know. On the top is the headphone socket, on the bottom micro USB, both sealed internally. Though I didn't test the IP67 rating here underwater, I'm not that brave with someone else's phone. On to the cameras then, which are the whole point of the eye, given the name. It's great to see HTC finally abandoning their ultra pixel experiment and duo camera clutches in favour of two 13 megapixel cameras, which actually work with few gimmicks. You'll see from these samples how good they both can be, as long as the light's good enough, which is what you'd expect from standard size sensors with no OIS or other aids. Pretty good, eh? Especially for macros. Not class leading, but good enough. In low light with LED flash, it all goes to pot, of course, but then it mainly does on almost any other phone camera apart from maybe the Galaxy Note 4, K-Zoom and a few of my Nokias. I suspect this is the same physical camera as in the HTC One Mini 2, by the way, which I also quite liked. Even though there's a Zoe app here, it's a cloud-based Google photo style affair. The 13 megapixel camera resolution means that the One m 7s always shooting snap before you hit the shutter button feature just isn't quite possible here. Maybe one for the next generation of image processors and GPUs. And this is a first for me on the phone show, shooting test footage on the front camera of a smartphone, thanks to the Desire Eye having two identical units. Uh, 1080p, no OIS, full stereo sound, though slightly noisy, as you can probably tell in the background. Uh, autofocus is there, but you can also lock focus on the very first thing you tap on in the viewfinder. See what you think. This is the Desire Eye video footage. 
HTC's Sense skin on top of Android 4.4 KitKat is probably familiar to you already, and I'm sure HTC will bring along an Android 5 upgrade at some point. The usual Blink feed aggregator is present and correct off to the left, plus a full page of uh, drop-down toggles on this notifications pane. Notable here is one for extreme power saving mode. Most of the Android skins do seem to have something similar now, but they do work well, stripping out everything heavy duty for battery low emergencies so that you can eke out power as long as possible before you arrive back at a charger. Also on this pane, by the way, is a toggle for the HDC Mini Plus. This is an optional extra accessory that provides a hardware keypad small display and infrared beamer on the top. The idea being that when mobile, for example, are working or running or just chilling out at home, you can break out phone calls, messages and so on to this accessory. Think of it as HTC's smartwatch that's not actually a watch, but styled like a small TV remote. The Mini Plus is well made. And I can absolutely see the use case, but I think if I'm going to have a separate breakout box for my Android smartphone, I'd rather have it on my wrist and permanently attached to me this thing is going to get lost. Media playback on the Desire Eye is terrific with stereo speakers and the crystal clear display. I tried YouTube and Netflix. <laughs> very noisy. Thank you very much. Curiously, although my side loaded media on micro SD were also played, you have to access these through the main Android camera gallery. You'd have thought HTC would have put in a basic MP4 player at least. Other useful software extras include the terrific kid mode, and the eye might even stand up to a typical five-year-old's ministrations. It's pretty rugged. Polaris Office 5, nice, but rather duplicating Google's own offerings. The old HTC browser duplicating Chrome, Skype, and support for HTC's dot view case range. Now you only get nine gig free out of the box from the 16 gigabyte internal disk, but popping in a big micro SD should solve any space worries very cheaply and quickly. It all adds up to a very smart, pretty rugged and extremely recommendable smartphone. Yes, I'm sure HTC is only weeks away from announcing the One M9, also with 5.2 inch screen and all metal, but I bet that will be at least £500. There's very little to fault here in the Desire Eye. If you can snap it up for the low 300s, then you've got yourself a pretty good deal.